Regards from Dnipro. This is the city in eastern Ukraine which actually speaks on itself because it's situated on the banks of the mighty Dnipro river as you can see. This is the mother river of Ukraine. Think of Mississippi to the United States, think of Vistula to Poland, Rhine uh, to Germany. Actually Dnipro is cutting Ukraine into half between the east and the west, making Dnipro city an important strategic position, especially during the warring times as we have now. So let's walk around the city, try to feel it and understand its historical and present importance. Today is nice and peaceful day. You can see local fishermen are simply trying to get some kind of catch in this questionably colored river, which is somehow green. Anyway, I wish them good luck. And uh, just take a look also on this huge, huge abandoned building, which is the hotel on the skyline. Uh, this is an example of the Soviet era structures that actually never came into full life existence. So basically the life in Dnipro goes its own way. This is the left bank meaning the east because the water flow is going from north to south and there not far away around three hour drive is Donbas where the most harsh battles are now taking place. And guys here you can actually see the map of Ukraine yes and for you for your orientation the heart is in Dnipro, right? So you can see this is the Dnipro province, Dniprovska Oblast, one of the largest in Ukraine actually, even though Ukraine itself is huge. I am living here in Lviv and the distance from Lviv to Dnipro is over than thousand kilometers, so pretty pretty far. And this is the neighboring province of Donetsk, which is the heartland of Donbas. This is my friend Sergei. Sergei, high five, nice to see you. How are you doing? You're local. Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. Can you specify on that? It's war, not far away from Dnipro. Yes, but you know, like from first day of uh, the war, I decided that I will stay here until the end. And uh, so far, it's nothing crazy going on here. So I'm happy, but I was uh, ready for worse. Actually, everybody thought it's much worse in Dnipro. Probably you're even thinking now like, Oras, what the hell are you doing there? The same I'm told by my friends and relatives in Lviv, but if to compare the uh, events that happened here during the war, it's like you, you had like what, like four or five attacks? Yes. Uh, the same happened in my native city Lviv, so even though with this geographic proximity to Donbass and to the warring areas around, Dnipro kind of, as we see, remained uh, pretty peaceful and as I understand, it is well protected city. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And of course, maybe another point that uh, Dnipro is the uh, second largest city by the area. So it's really hard to probably shell. And they are, uh, those motherfuckers, they're pretty far from uh, Dnipro to shell it with drugs and rest of their rockets. And uh, of course, because of the location, it's a long time to point the target where is the rockets flying and then our military they can shoot the rockets because they have more time than for example from Kharkiv because it's like just right there behind the border like 30-40 kilometers and it's really hard to uh, see the rockets and for Dnipro I think the rockets fly in like five or something like that minutes at least so they have time our military have time to find them and try to shoot them so basically I just came came here from Kharkiv where I spent a few days and guys it's crazy like the city is being bombarded every single day we literally hear explosions in the, in the vicinity during night night and during day so I highly recommend you to watch the previous videos about Kharkiv and we will carry on uh, with Dnipro and you know developing the story uh, the city was a vital uh, strategic point during the Soviet Union. So it was the center of the rocket industry uh, in Ukraine. 
that's why uh, some of these uh, military units probably still remain here since the Soviet times and that's why the city has very very well established um, this air defense system also as he told there is way more time to track the missiles that are coming from the Russian Federation take a look guys on those uh, sculptures so there you can see some mother with children and so on and now I will tell you the story behind it so definitely that is like a new stuff but that's those are the replicas of so-called uh, Scythian grandmas Skivski Babe so the area where Dnipro is situated is the arid uh, uh, steep part of Ukraine as opposed to more densely populated uh, sections of northern and western Ukraine that are rather foresty. So this territory was a tribal place for many, many uh, centuries. Kimerians, Scythians, Pechenegs, even Mongols made their way all the way here. So the city of Dnipro itself was founded as the urban center a little bit later in the 17th century as far as I remember and it quickly grew to the major center in southern and central parts of Ukraine becoming the real industrial giant and eventually now as he told is the second city in Ukraine by the area and among the top five by population nowadays Dnipro is considered to be a rather modern Ukrainian city so uh, you see there are some developments happening along the, uh, the waterfront promenade still it has some kind of uh, post-soviet feel and this huge hotel is the pure evidence of this i even remember i was staying there once so just take a look uh, there on the lower level there is kind of modernish uh, entrance but otherwise the hotel is absolutely almost utilized uh, it was winter I came to Dnipro to make the book presentation that I wrote in the previous years and you know accommodated that hotel because the price was acceptable. He invited me to the room in the inner yard of the city in order to be protected from the winter snowstorms that might come from the humid part near the, the river itself but it was still kind of kind of cold and I remember the snow was blowing inside. But this is like an extreme example, guys. Uh, Dnipro is absolutely much more than that. It is one of the richest cities in Ukraine. Uh, many rich people originate from here. And even during the 90s, it was kind of the center of the political life uh, of our country because most of them industrial, powerful people, politicians originated uh, from those areas. So let's carry on and see the true modern side of Dnipro. What is impressive is that in the center of the post-Soviet buildings you can find really nice new modernish cafes of, of this kind of style. So everything you can have, the ginger ale, the, the pastries, the beautiful coffee. So uh, yeah, the life goes normal as it used to, used to should be. Another bonus of this cafe is the art gallery. So people are working over here, customers are served there, and Sergei is enjoying the beautiful art of Dnipro. Oh yes, oh yes, you know. My wife Marta would really enjoy it because these are the spaces uh, she's really keen on. And uh, yeah, honey, sometime we hope we'll be back. And drinking, sometimes we hope we can drink. Yeah, but this is alcohol free. Thank you very much, Hrvoya. Cheers. Exactly. Budmo. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. Sometimes we just uh, like go up to the run. Uh, every all the runners meeting here, and we're just drinking coffee and tea. Some cool. desserts. That's uh, the carb loading after after the race. So that's when you really finish, good. you go here after yeah. the race. Yeah, everybody meeting here. So every Sunday, seven o'clock in the morning, we meet here at the front of the cafe, 
running from 10 till uh, 21 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Then coming back here and just enjoying chatting. Absolutely, and this is an impressive place. So basically, great spot. Wow, what is this? Are we still in Dnipro? That definitely looks like something from, I don't know, like western part of the world. Serhii, can okay. you explain us? Yeah, so this is the towers, towers buildings. It's like really old. I think this is the one of the first uh, uh, tall buildings in the Dnipro, the modern, but they're already like 20 years old. Yeah, so they date they, they, they back to the 90s, right? Yes. Or early 2000s. Yes, yes, yes. And, and the uh, rest? And the rest, I don't remember this one. This is the amphitheater. Inside of these buildings, uh, you will see like pretty cool uh, the front yard, like the amphitheater. And this one is the most expensive uh, real estate in the world. It's called Amsterdam. You see, so uh, even places like this uh, exist here, and that's actually pretty impressive once you are walking uh, in, in the city to, to see this. And this might be wondering yourself, like, is there enough capital for this? Well, guys, definitely yes. The largest financial institution of Ukraine has its headquarters here in Dnipro. It is called the Privat Bank. At some point in our recent history, nearly 80% of all the financial transactions have been made within Privat Bank. So basically, many people associate Dnipro with Privat Group. Uh, let me give you an example. If you want to send money to somebody, you want to lend, you want to buy, usually what you do is you ask, what is your number? I'll send you the money down there. And this is understood as what is your account number in Privat Bank that I'm going to use to give you money so basically it was mutually agreed in the society to use the private bank transactions by default and the reason for that it's it's a really comfortable financial system to to operate it's very flexible it's very fast uh, most people have their accounts uh, making it uh, smooth and make it very very efficient so in comparison to you know, like some Western uh, bank or financial institutions, I see them much less flexible and much more conservative in comparison to financial system uh, in Ukraine. Here, guys, you see another example of a successful and efficient financial institution. Obviously, this is the church, as you already understood. And uh, what's interesting, just next to the chapel itself, so just right here, there is like a small house uh, of, of the priest and you know this is rather a place to hang out with the sauna and uh, we cannot get into there but from there you could see a beautiful beautiful view which goes over the city yeah to those uh, rich and posh uh, neighborhoods so basically in ukraine religion is important and church holds a very firm position still influencing the social life <laughs> priests are the most powerful people in their communities whether it is a large metropolitan city like Dnipro or a small small town so we just reached the it's a monastery island right yes monastery island because why monastery you understood right and island because it's in the middle of the river from where you can see this amazing amazing view guys and it feels here like in the middle of the, of the forest One of the cool uh, opportunities for Dnipro, like the city, for the future, 
that cool part that we have one of the longest uh, embarkment, river embarkment, and it can be used like for building beautiful houses in town, the townhouses. So, and I think uh, it'd be really popular for the people. It's like, like a riverfront Miami. Yes, yes, yes. I would say like New York. I love the Dnipro because it's reminds me of New York. The left uh, side of the river and the right side of the new river. And we are like in Manhattan right now. So on the other side, it's the New York. Uh, so yeah. Is it like private land on the park we are walking right now? That's what I heard. That's why the city not doing anything. So like we walk with like uh, every like bushes and everything. So that's what they saying. Like some people saying like that's uh, like 90s or start of uh, 2000s. Somebody like took this land in private ownership and that's it. actually guys we can layer uh, in the entire modern history of ukraine on this topic so during the collapse of soviet union people who were like in control of some large enterprises directors of factories and so on they kind of bought the assets very quickly or used some other techniques to acquire uh, rights on them and basically this is the story of the oligarch rise yes then very quickly during the first decade largest amount of ukrainian gdp were accumulated in the hands of a few dozen uh, families and this is like you know very very evident here in dnipro when the privat group that i already explained to you about and the people around it basically own the city so i was shocked to hear from serhi that this amazing park near the waterfront of Dnipro river it is set up on a private land uh, or like you know maybe there are more rumors around this but the way it is neglected and the way it is not taken care of is very evident and it actually tells that many processes are simply not going right in the middle of a lush green park you've got this imposing historical structure which is in a very very neglected state wishing wishing to wait for better times it, it makes me cry you have this amazing river city finances like why don't you take care of this stuff Okay, I have to take back my, my words. Uh, there are some parts of the city that look very, very attractive. For example, this one, just once we left the park, well-designed public spaces, very pedestrian friendly. It's simply comfortable to be here uh, around with a bike lane, with some modernistic benches, with the office buildings, which you can access only on foot and you have to park your car behind this is the standard it should be and this is eventually the the area which is somehow closer to amsterdam as opposed to those posh apartments we've seen down there by the river obviously once you have this kind of area it attracts life it attracts people it's simply comfortable to stick around people go here to enjoy to play with kids have a stroll, have a coffee. Yeah, and this is the different side of Dnipro with some nice restaurants. Although some people are probably still struggling. But as a rule, the cosmetically, it looks much, much better. And it looks like we are approaching the historical city center, looking at those uh, late 19th century building dating back to the Tsarist time. Yeah, there is such so much more to see in Dnipro than somebody can think of. 
even though we are walking on a completely peaceful city guys as you can see it's important to remember that the country is at war there are some part of the trenches that you can see here also there those are all evidences of the warring state and uh, obviously i cannot show you military positions but believe me there are quite a lot all around the city to control traffic to 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 watch the area and uh, yeah since i told dnipro is a vital strategically positioned town on the dnipro river so it's very very important to keep situation under control over here so Sergei, Sergei, you, you mentioned New York, Newark. It seems like you, you, you know the area that you were talking about. Of course. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I used to live uh, 11 years in the United States and last four years I used to live in uh, New York City. So And, and before of, that? And before that it was uh, Miami, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Atlantic City, Washington DC, Colorado Mountains. What's your connection to Dnipro actually? Uh, I used to study in this university, mining, National Mining University, but right now they changed the name for Polytechnica. I think it's not really... it didn't make it cooler, but yes, I used to study in this uh, university before I moved to the United States. So you studied here, you spent your youth times in Dnipro, then you went to the United States, where we actually meet guys. Uh, I was... Uh, I visited New York first time in 2014 and said he was kind enough to host me in this incredibly expensive city for accommodation so thank you and thank you for hosting us again always always welcome yeah so what made you come back from the u.s uh, to ukraine that's like uh, inside feeling that i got this feeling that it's time to go back to ukraine uh, without doubt i just uh, pack my stuff and i move back to ukraine because i I think that my, I thought that my life experience and uh, skills will be really useful for Ukraine. So i using something for better. Some streets of central Dnipro are truly impressive and iconic, even for uh, Western standards. Well maintained. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good, very good impression. So basically, guys, it tells us and it's important to always look on the two parts of the coin definitely you can in every town you can see some uh, rock bottom neglected places but at the same time you can see those and uh, this is a good sign this is the good sign that Dnipro was kind of on a right track in the recent years now it's kind of disrupted because of the war but uh, because the city is close to the front line it will also hopefully will receive enough funds to make it even better than before. Shelter, let's go, let's go. From time to time still there are aerostrike alarms and that's when it's advised to go underground. So what's this? Is shelter? Oh yes, it's, uh, it's our shelter, the best place uh, if we will be stuck here. You know we have the, Hello. Some, we have some sushi here, so we'll not be hungry. Okay, we have, hide uh, in style. Yes, we have a uh, studio for uh, laser depilation so okay so all the girls uh, yes, you can do your yes, necessary yeah, stuff over here as well. we can shave your legs as well. so basically it's entire underground city oh yes of course and here like you can order pizza yes so this is the best the best team so you can order pizza here here we'll fix our nails as well so and this is to fix the nails yes during so we'll, the attack yes we'll fix the nails here uh, uh, we'll Hello. So basically you can see everything is adapted to a normal life underground. Wow. And here is the most juicy part of this magnificent place. So this uh, is this, this is your spot. Oh yes, this is my hiding spot. The safest cafe in the whole Ukraine. What's the what its name? It's called Kanale Cafe. Kanale Cafe. 
Okay, so uh, what can you tell? Like, it's your business or what's the deal here? Uh, that's uh, like my, I don't know, like uh, hobby, just a little hobby because uh, I uh, used to work in uh, New York City a restaurant with a Michelin star and one of the desserts was the beautiful canale. I actually like they look pretty ugly but they are delicious uh, and uh, nobody can say no to that dessert so and uh, I decided to create some little spot where I can create desserts and drinks that not present in you presented in Ukraine or in Dnipro either you made us the entire tour of Dnipro showing all of those places just eventually to bring here and uh, try your coffee of course <laughs> okay guys i think at this moment we have to stop exploring dnipro i just want to thank again to serhi for such an amazing hospitality and showing us around if you're looking for a fixer in dnipro this is the guy you should know and contact definitely i'm going to provide direct links to his cafe and to profiles of Serhi directly below this video and at this moment sorry we would like to have a nice coffee don't stop watching and see you in the second part of this video What are you doing in this wheelchair? We are trying to buy the wheelchair for a poor young guy who broke his leg in the car accident, the guy from the orphanage. And now we want uh, want help. Our NGO, Dobre Dobrem, is trying to get a proper wheelchair for the guy. So we're trying to find a good one. So now let me explain you what happened. Basically, Last week we were delivering a large amount of uh, aid support from Croatia together with Hrvoje and his team through all the different orphanages in, uh, in central Ukraine. And we finished in the one orphanage in eastern Ukraine in the town of Lichkove. The family was very nice, they invited us well. And after a few days when we left, the uh, mother of all the 12, 11 children called me and told the Orest, one of our son got into the car accident he nearly lost his leg. So basically we came to Dnipro, visit the poor boy, and now uh, one of the requirements he has is um, uh, the wheelchair, which we are going to buy. So we did it, great job. Let's go now to the hospital, straight to the guy. Yeah. is such a huge city it takes a lot to move around even though if the city center is still kind of pedestrian friendly it's possible to, to walk driving anywhere takes a lot of time the outskirts of Dnipro are spanning for many many kilometers uh, it's actually a much bigger city than it feels like because it's spread out on the both sides of the Dnipro river and even in some uh, remote places uh, of this uh, large town uh, you can see shopping malls you can see the tram uh, also very very busy uh, very busy bus stations so people maybe use some suburban lines uh, so yeah you can see the market so, uh, grannies are selling something just like this on the street yeah and the typical typical post uh, soviet atmosphere and the feel over here but very different to my native Lviv actually let's go oh. <laughs> Oh, good. it's good. Now there is airstrike alarm. Everybody is down in the shelter, but here is the hospital. Okay, so, so please, it will be like this. This is from our organization. From Dobro Dobrim. Uh, we want to give you something extra. 
you were, uh, as I said, like the last time when we were there, you were very hospitable toward us. We saw that you are one of the places in, in more need than usual. And this is after this accident, we decided to give you our support and support uh, the kid. So... Olga doesn't understand you, but she understands everything is, is for good. So thank you. <laughs> Olga, the mother, just went out from the hospital to get the, the, the wheelchair delivered. And actually now there is an airstrike alarm happening. There is a risk of the city being bombarded. So she told that the entire, all the children, all the patients went down into the basement. And like there are only two wheelchairs for the entire department. So basically he had to go somehow there. And now they will have the private wheelchair uh, that they will be able even to walk around the park and so on. So guys, Dobro Dobrim from Croatia doing all these good things for Ukraine. Uh, I am personally grateful on behalf of all the Ukrainians. And uh, let's keep on going, yeah? And, and we are grateful that we have someone who is helping us to, to do these good deeds, deeds. Now, when we see the situation here in Dnipro, we will try to, our organization will try probably to do much more. That's how the cooperation should be done, guys. Oh, wow, guys. So you see so many new fresh graves, actually not that fresh. Voronov Srihi in 2014, 18, 18. So those soldiers who fell during the Russo-Ukrainian war. And just to remind you that this war started in 2014 when uh, Russia annexed Crimea and invaded Donbas. So the current escalation what we have is just much more active, active and aggressive phase. But remember, the war started eight years ago, not a couple of months ago. So this is um, this is very like respectful, very disturbing, actually. Also, At the same time, how Ukrainians pay um, honor to their heroes. Uh, we we see here a huge graveyard of the soldiers that were uh, fighting for Ukrainians independence during last few years and we see like a lot of new graves with new soldiers new young people dying and you can see you know this you know the, the respect that the Ukrainian people are, 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 are doing like this all of these flags uh, and if you have a chance to, uh, to see the videos of uh, the funeral of Ukrainian soldiers this is also very deep the people are usually kneeling while the, the 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 column is passing so it's something that you know at least you know you can the, the hero deserves something like that and this is dnipro but such graves of heroes of ukraine you can see all around the country in my native city lviv on a daily basis in the one of the cathedral actually like just 200 100 meters from my place where i live there are constant constant uh, religious procedures with family members with soldiers coming from the east arriving in the, in, in the tombs already right so this is very hard to accept but guys this is the reality we're living on in the moment so most graves on that side are from the early stages of the war however this look guys entire new field with fresh graves since last few months and uh, one man just approached us he told look at this like there are a lot of grass it's not really well kept even uh, as Hrvoya mentioned uh, the soldiers are in a big respect over here but uh, still they sh they deserve more they deserve more on the governmental level they deserve more uh, in their memory which starts also from taking care of the resting place some tombs and crosses doesn't have any flowers on them and uh, so i came closer to take a look and it's written Ukraine, which means in ukrainian temporary unknown defender of ukraine so many people cannot be identified 
and uh, unfortunately there are more places waiting for them very very touchy place it's a very difficult time for our country officials report that over 100 soldiers die daily this is a tremendous toll very large price that's our country is paying now and i really hope that it is not for nothing obviously it is not guys thanks for watching this video from dnipro i hope it was insightful for you and uh, stay safe and stay with ukraine see you in the upcoming editions or from dnipro ukraine